what was assumed to be a regular day for the people in Itafaji, Lagos State, Nigeria, was met with a lasting trauma of a four-story building collapse housing an elementary school. This was one of the 43 building collapse incidents in Nigeria in 2019. The building caved in seconds with no time to escape. Some of the victims share their encounter as they live with the indelible scar of the collapse. I tell from our teachers, the, the ones that school. I tell for them, until this school have want to collapse, they not beat me. I tell for my own, my teacher too. This school I want to collapse, they to beat me. When I'm writing, that's good now collapse. So when it's still scattered bending, so our head needs to idea that some people could come and plaster it. So after they plaster it, it was not still straight, it was still bending. So I was not afraid to get to this man. I'm a matter of doctor, me then it trains in you. Tie at the coin dinner. So now I'm a jiggy. Tie in a canary, she listed you low balloody. So Baba Pussybe. But kind day, what you are alive from here. Over the last 10 years, the incidence of building collapse in Nigeria has become so alarming and does not show any sign of abating. In Lagos State alone, which is Nigeria's largest city, there were 17 building collapses in 2019, recording the highest number of collapse of the 36 states, followed by Anambra State. Consequences of these building collapses cannot be overemphasized as they include loss of physical properties, destruction of movable properties, injury and loss of life. In a whole, it has economic, financial, psychological and sociological implications as each collapse carries along with its tremendous effect that cannot be easily forgotten by any of its victims. I was not breathing, I was only breathing sand uh, under the umbrella for four hours. I spoke with experts and disaster experts who shared reasons for the recurrent collapse. Our people are engaging in sharp practices. Sharp practices deals with the type of material that they are using to build their, 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 their building. Look at the, 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 the engineers that they are using. You will discover that some of the builders that they are using, they are not professionals. You get what I'm saying? They are not professionals. Secondly, if you look at the materials that they are using, they are not, they are substandard. The blocks are substandard. The, 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 the integrity are substandard. Now, when we now look at where do they obtain government permits? No, 95% of them are not taking government permit. The other thing that could have also been responsible for building collapses, deviating from what has been designed. For example, you could have designed a building for a story building. And getting to site, you said you want to take it on the additional floor. Most likely, you already signed up for a collapse. Items which are very important and salient in the construction may be omitted. And this would cause distresses in the building. According to Ayinu Ola and Olalusi, building failure in Nigeria is attributed to 50% design fault, 40% construction fault, and 10% product failure. Of the many collapse incidences, occupied buildings are more affected than those under construction or newly completed. This begs the question, who are the builders and how skilled are they? Who shares the responsibility of building collapses? I see one block, she have room there. And I see that this school, we are going to collapse. And I go up and I tell for our teacher. Despite the signs of a soon to collapse building, experts say building owners and engineers sometimes do not carry out appropriate tests on their buildings. If you don't maintain your building, if you don't use it properly, if you don't do integrity tests of your building, it will definitely collapse. Engineering being a lifelong uh, experience, we're supposed to move along with the innovations and the technological changes. While individuals have a part to play in ensuring safety standards adhered to, 
Governmental agencies have also been put in place to ensure building codes are implemented. We've put a lot of regulations in place to check and to prevent building collapse. Now, what are the things we put in place? We have a viable legal state fiscal planning in place. We have, um, we have building controlling agency in place. We have the material testing agency in place. We have engineers in each of our local government. Apart from that, the building controlling agency has decentralized their activities in each of our local government, in each of our central district. Our regulatory body is also doing so much, having to curb so many lapses, uh, and so many unprofessionals are also doing these jobs. As the government officials grapple to fight against the incessant building collapses, as well as the engagement of building consultants and the adherence to building codes, according to IISTE, it's important that specific tests such as electrical services efficiency test, mechanical services efficiency test, cracks and dilapidation assessment, waterworks efficiency test and quality assessment are all carried out. Primarily, and this is on a general note, we find that cracks appear on buildings. And uh, for every tenant or every owner of a building, then you find cracks in your buildings, be it on the floor decks on the side, uh, the walls, diagonal cracks, any type of cracks that you see. It should be a good advice to give that um, this be checked out by uh, qualified structural engineers. Secondly, you find for old buildings uh, which have gone past they begin with cracks, but they begin to have, the building begin to have a spalling. Spalls is the chunks of concrete begins to fall from the deck, which is the floor slab. And uh, people try to patch them up. People just try to uh, do some palliatives, but these are actually much more than that. The causes are much more than that. And these are just um, surface protection. The scars of collapse still dig deep in the psyche of its lucky survivors who say they would never step foot in the vicinity where his elementary school was once founded. I feel sad when I pass in that place. I don't want to enter that place again. I said that I will never enter the building again. It's traumatized. The reality remains that major victims are those with no power or influence and cannot afford properly structured houses, hence are made to pay the heaviest price, most times with their lives. With the high number of building collapses and the level of reoccurrence in Nigeria, would this serve as a good enough prompt for all the relevant authorities to swing into action and bring the perpetrators to book? For Plus TV Africa, Irene Ubani.